Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Focus on Liberia. My name is Dennis Jai, and we are broadcasting from Atlanta, Georgia. We want to welcome all of you to a special edition of Focus on Liberia. And the story tonight is a very sad story indeed. I'm here with a family, Emmanuel and Louis Wapo. They are joining me from Low, Massachusetts. And uh, we want to welcome all of you to this uh, broadcast. This indeed is a very sad story. Emmanuel and Louis, they lost their 25-year-old son and we're here to the circumstances under which they lost their son. That's what we're gonna be delving into tonight and what we as a community can do to rally around this family. Louis and Emmanuel, I wanna say welcome to Focus on Liberia. We're so glad to have you. So thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. We want to say, uh, first of all, we want to express our profound condolences for the passing for the loss of your son, Moses Harris. And uh, just before we begin the show, we want to uh, give our viewers the opportunity to see what this family is going through. So let me start by this video to just give you an idea of what we are here for. Their son, Emmanuel, uh, their son, Moses Harris. This is the boy we're gonna be talking about. He was declared missing and 77 days later found his body and we're gonna be delving into that in total. I wanna to say welcome again, uh, Emmanuel and Louis, joining me from my old city of Lowell. Emmanuel, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you so much, Brother Dennis. Uh, we're so <clears throat> glad to have you. And uh, it's a sad story, so I'm not gonna begin the usual way because this is not, but we wanna say uh, thank you for the courage to come out and uh, talk to us about this story. So first of all, let me say uh, just briefly an introduction of yourself, starting with you, Emmanuel. My name is Emmanuel Wapo. I'm the father of uh, Moses Harris, and uh, I live in Lowell, Massachusetts with my family, and I've been here in the United States now for about seven years with my family, but it came long before me. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Louise? My name is Louise Harris, Daddy. I live in Lowell, Massachusetts. I'm the mother of Moses Harris. I lived in Low Mass for 15 years. And the 5th of July, she have made Moses and I 16 years in the United States. And I'm here to tell you my story today. And let's start, uh, let me show you the picture of the young Moses Harris. This is Moses Harris. And let's start by saying, tell me what happened to Moses and why are you here tonight? Tonight, um, this is what happened to Moses. On the afternoon of December 19, I got a call from my husband that the low police were at my house. So, and he told me the police wanted me at once. I have gone to do a COVID test and at the, the clinic, my husband told me, you have to leave and come now. There are two low police here and they said it came to say something to you about Moses. So I hurriedly got on my car, you know, started coming before then. I was calling Moses' number, calling, calling. I didn't get him. So I came to the house and work on the police in. When we all came in the house, they told me, are you Louis Harris? I said, yes. They're like, are you Moses' mother? And I said, yes. He said, well, we are so sorry. We are here to tell you that at this point, he could not make it alive. So I'm like, what are you talking about? Could not make it alive, what are you talking about? 
He said, oh, um, you know, he had a little altercation with the police and, you know, he fled into the river and um, we could not get him. I'm like, what about the, the divers? What about the, you know, whatever you guys can do to get him out? Why didn't you get him out? He said, well, we, we did what we could do, but um, we could not get him out. And the place was so cold and it was a frozen water. So it was so difficult and we could not get him out. So at that point, to be frank with you, I lost it. I didn't know where I was. And I just, you know, at a certain point in time, I saw my husband holding me because I had lost it. And I, I didn't even know where I was at the time. Okay. Hmm. All right. So this is in uh, what time of the, which month again you say, what, December? December 19, 2020. December, December 19 is a freezing cold. And uh, they said they had an altercation and Moses went and jumped in the river and they couldn't find him. That's the, that's what they told you. Yes. Initially, that's what it said. Initially, that's what it told me. Oh. Emmanuel, anything to, to add on why you were here tonight? Yeah. Um, just like my wife said, um, when the police came out of the house, they said, uh, initially they said he, and uh, just to add up, they came 12 hours, 30 minutes after the incident occurred. The incident occurred on the 19th of December at about 2.30 a.m. And they came to the house after 2.30 in the afternoon. So it was 12 hours after the entire incident before the police came out of the house to inform us that Moses went missing. And they did, according to the officer who came out of the house, Sergeant Denny, he said they did a brief search and they caught it off because the place was cold. Hmm. Let me play that video of the, uh, so that people have a, an idea of what the river looked like that we are talking about here because, and we'll come back to what happened, but I just want people to see when you say the Congo River, there where you've been having this uh, video for Moses, but let's people have an idea of what the Congo River looked like in Lower Massachusetts. This is the Congo River where the police claimed that Moses jumped on the morning of December 19 at about 2 30 a.m. when he had a brief encounter with my unknown police officer that led to his disappearance and death. So we are here seeking justice for Moses Harris. It took 77 days for Moses' body to be recovered. We as a parent, we, we cried and cried and the medical examiner and everyone refused for us to go and identify somebody until the body was turned over to us on March 19. And uh, we want you to join us in this course so that the death of another black man will not go unaccounted for. So that's the uh, Concord River, and uh, thank you for that uh, message. So before we even go into the story, tell me who is uh, Moses Harris? Tell me what was it like being there? What was, what was he doing? What was he all about in Lowell, Massachusetts? Give me an idea of who Moses was. Moses was a 25-year-old young man who was very strong. Moses graduated from Low High, attended um, the Middlesex Community College. He didn't graduate, but was working 40 hours a week and doing, you know, after work hours, helping the community, doing their houses, doing constructions around the community, helping mothers who are in need, helping his friends, very generous, very loving, caring, hardworking. This is who Moses was. And so on the night that Moses uh, was rep reported missing, what actually happened? And was it, was Moses even living in the house or was he in his own apartment? What, 
you know, tell me a little bit more on that night, what happened where Moses was. Moses was living on his own because he's a man mm -hmm. and he was very responsible. Moses was living on his own and um, he had mm -hmm. a girlfriend that stated to the police that Moses broke a car. Yeah. They had an encounter and she called the police and calling to the police. They said Moses broke the car, the front, the back, and everything. But this car was not broken as the police claimed. It was just a little window that was broken on the car, but the police claimed Moses broke everywhere, according to them. So I'm not sure what is going on. The police are not transparent. Hmm. Then, then what happened, according to the police, after Moses broke the, allegedly broke the car? The, they, the police, according to the police, when they later called the police, Moses left the area. And then uh, when the police got at the house, Moses was not at the house. So according to them, they left. And then later on, According to them, Moses came back and then they later called the police again. When they got there, Moses had left the house. So, according to the police, there's an apartment complex one block away from Moses' house. M Moses was parked in the, in the parking lot of the apartment block, there where his car was parked. Because the car Moses was using was a 2013 four, it's a 2013 four Explorer, a retired police van. So Moses was parked in the parking lot, and the police officer. They said there was a police officer patrolling the area, and he came across Moses's car, and when he approached Moses, Moses got down from his car with his two hands up in the air, he had, the officer had something in his hands, pointed at Moses. Moses showed his hands, stretched his hands towards him, like signaling, like stop. And the officer says something to Moses. Moses tried to get on his knee. He got up and he started running away. The officer ran after Moses. At that point, the video went dark. So no one saw what happened in the dark with the officer and Moses. It was where the video stopped. The video clip that day, there was a 10 second clip that the police show us on December 26 at the low police headquarters. Mm -hmm. That's how the video stopped. So that was the entire incident of that night. Right. So, so did the police say, did they, why was this police approaching Moses in the parking lot? Did he know that Moses had an altercation with his girlfriend and was in the parking lot or this was just random police patrol? According to them, they have made a call on their system. And uh, according to the chief of police, Commissioner uh, Curley, the, in fact, the officer was a rookie. He's a 23 year old rookie in a low police force who approached Moses. So uh, at the station that day, I asked him why he had to send a 23 year old rookie at 2 a.m. all by himself. And he said the officer was, uh, he received the call and he was in the area and he decided to check uh, the, the parking lot. So we requested we did the FOIA, uh, the Freedom of Information Act request to know what exactly the, what the call the police made so that we can listen to the call. Because if you can allow us to see a clip of the video, we can also listen to the call. That request had never been granted since December 26. No. No. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Focus on Liberia. This is a special Wednesday, May week edition of Focus on Liberia. We are in conversation with Mr. Emmanuel Wapo and his wife, Lois Wapo. Both of them lost their son, Moses Harris, 25 years old. And this happened 
in December when, according to the police, he had a brief encounter with them, ran and jumped in the cool Congo River and his body was found 77 days later. The grieving parents are here. They are crying for justice and that's what we are here tonight. Again, so let me go back to that story. So your information as to what truly occurred came from that officer video for 10 seconds. And in that 10 second video, you were saying Moses was on his knees and the officer said something and Moses started running and that was it. Yeah. Yes, that was it. So and in that video, nobody saw Moses jumping in the river. No. no, there's no video. Up to today, we have requested the police department to show us the video that show Moses jumping into the water. There's no video. <laughs> And the officer, according to the commissioner, there were they called K9, they called the fire service, and uh, we asked them to see the entire video of what assistance was afforded Moses. There's no video to the effect. They do not want to show us anything. We asked for the police report. The police report is not forthcoming. And how deep is this river where Moses allegedly or reportedly jumped? How deep is that? That is it, you know, how deep is it? Let me show that river again. This is the Concord River where the police claimed that Moses jumped on the morning of December 19 at about 2 30 a.m. when he had a brief encounter with my unknown police officer that led to his disappearing and death. So we are here seeking justice for Moses Harris. So, so my question, describe this river to me. And um, if Moses got in it, let's say, let's say he did, what will happen to him? How deep is it? They, 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 it's a running river. It runs throughout the year, but it's a tributary to the Merrimack River. The Merrimack River is the largest river within the Merrimack Valley. And the Congo River is a little tributary to the Merrimack River. And um, the river is not very deep. At, that, at where we were standing, the river is not deep or going downward. Up there is a little shadow. And uh, what they did not do for us is to take us to the exact location of where the incident happened. Up to now. Up to now, they have not taken us to the exact location. They told us the incident happened on 850 Lawrence Street in Lowell, Massachusetts. Uh, 0, 01852. So we went there in the parking lot and then we were able to follow the Concord River. But watching the video, you see Moses walk, uh, walking down from the parking lot and running down that way. But there's no video to show us he jumped, he jumped into the, in river. the river. They stopped the video to where Moses was running and the officer was running after him. Whatever happened, when the officer took off running after Moses, there's no video. There's no information. No information. According to the video, did you hear anything that would have triggered or see anything that would have triggered Moses to run? Yes. No the audio. Officer, the officer has something in his hands. He has something in his hands pointed at Moses. So Moses stretched his hands, signaling like, stop. And then Moses took off running. And the officer chases Moses. And the video, there the video went dark. We have asked them to provide us the entire video. And uh, low police claim that they do not have a body camera. And they also claim that their police van do not I have a camera. camera. The camera they obtained was the security surveillance camera from the apartment. the apartment complex. So we wrote a letter to the local police department requesting the video in entirety, because if it was the apartment complex video that you're showing us, that means when the incident happened, the video, the apartment complex camera continued rolling. It didn't stop. So if you call the K9, you call the diver, you call the fire service, you call the fire service. All of the assistance you claim that you have for them Moses to assist him who have been caught on camera. But there him? is no footage.
to show us that all of these assistance were afforded Moses. In fact, they have become so adamant, they do not want to answer any question from us. When we go protesting, they, now, stop us from protesting. they have stopped us from protesting. They build a barricade around the police headquarters and the city hall in law that we can no longer go there to protest. So what exactly are they saying that happened to him? They think, uh, by as I don't want to assume, but what they're saying, they just it's just another death of a black man. He, like, he jumped in the river and that's it. He jumped into the river and that's it. And that's it. Did Moses have any prior run with the law? W was he somebody that he knew, oh, it's, it's him again or something like that? What was he like when it comes to the law? Well, I will be frank with you in this one. Um, Sometimes we, we human, we just choose the wrong partners. And he was always in the form of choosing the wrong partners. So every time there were girls who would jump on him for fight. And when he jumped, when they jump on him for fight, they call the police on top of it. Every time you went for like to ask them to explain, they always wrong him. But because he would not hold back, the police would always take him. So other than in the fight with girls, there was no other problem with the police. I'm really, really sorry. So so, so now, as of today. Were you able to, first of all, were you able to see the body or was there any autopsy to tell the cause of death? The autopsy, the, according to the medical examiner, the first thing is uh, when Moses' body was found on March 7 in Hanover, they, they refused for us to identify Moses' body. What do you mean? They normally when body is discovered, mm -hmm. parents of the deceased or are, family or family of the deceased or whosoever or the next of kings are allowed to go and identify the body. But in mm -hmm. our case, we were denied. Why? On the ground that uh, the, it was their policy. So I wrote an official letter to the medical examiner office so that they could make available the policy for me so that I can see it in black and white, yeah. that it is a policy. So to this day, that is yet to happen. They refuse, they decline to respond to my mail. I contacted the attorney general of the state of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. She did not reply. I contacted the governor's office because the governor is the employer of the medical examiner. The governor did not reply. So I went to our senior and junior senator, senators and complained. And then Senator Elizabeth Warren and Senator L. McKee offices said they were going to intervene. Senator Warren called and said, let me make one or two calls. She called back and said, um, they say it's their policy. They say it's their policy. So I said, Senator, with all due respect, can I see, can I, can they show me a link can they show me anything where I can go and read for myself to articulate where the policy, where it is stated? That did not happen. No so we did not identify Moses' body. They called us so that we can give them uh, Moses' dentist report. And I told them, until I go to identify, I was not going to give the, the dentist record. Later on, they said they contacted the dentist and they got the record, so it's a match. In fact, the first thing they told us was they identified Moses from his tattoo because he had two tattoo on his uh, left and right arm. On his right arm, he has the face of Jesus with uh, a rose and, uh, and that. And then they did not identify, they did not allow us to identify him. But and then they said, what's for autopsy? They did, they said they did the autopsy. The autopsy report is what we have been struggling with since December 8th. They did the autopsy December 8th. March 8th. I mean, sorry, March 8th. They did the autopsy March 8th. And they said they were going to give us the autopsy after 90 days. That has been a fight. In the first place, preliminary report should be should have been given. We were also denied that. 
They did not give us the preliminary report. So 90 days, no report. We call everywhere for, for you know, whoever could help us to talk to them. The report did not come. After 120 days, we are still waiting for the report to come out. So wow. on the on official it, death certificate, the cause of death is unknown. Is that normal? I mean, I'm not familiar with this thing, but is it normal for someone who they claim drown, jump in a river and then you no. don't have the taxi? No. no, it's not. Every parent who I know lost their children, I was told that preliminary report can be given. And then after 90 days, you get your report. Get the you get the final report. But not with our case. Our case, we, they told us, in fact, if the, the DA does not get to go ahead to release the report, we cannot even, you know, get the report. We have to be writing here, writing there, calling Air Marquis, the, the senator, calling everywhere, calling all over the place just to obtain a report for my son. If you tell me he jumped in the river, you claim I should be able to see something that telling me what was the cause of his death. And you have mm -hmm. the power because you are trained in that area. You should be able to tell me what happened to him. And why are you holding on to the report to tell me what happened to him? It's it fair. You treat me like it does not matter. We, as family, we do not matter as well. Hmm. Uh, if this not normal for police to do this, what do you think your case is different? Um, whatever happened to Moses that night, they they're trying to black back their brother in blue. Yes. Because there is more questions than answers. answers. Because the name of the police officer is not it's known. It's yet to be known. Mm -hmm. What happened that night, the entire story is yet to be known. Yes. When uh, we file a complaint to the court for the release of information act, they should have given us, they should have given us the, the report. The report, they deny us the report. And then based on that, based on that, the court ordered them to give us the report. They gave us some flimsy sheet of paper heavily redacted that make report. no sense. No. So we went back and requested a report in its entirety. And they have built another stone wall because what they give us is not uh, authenticated. No one signs it. Wow. Besides there's, the name of the police officer is not there. There's no basic. All where the, the location of where the whole thing you know, happened is not there. So why are you giving me? Does that make sense? If you are not hiding anything, you should put all the information that I needed to be on the paper. But what are you mm -hmm. hiding? What are you hiding? Hmm. Do you do you have any lawyer who's working on this? Not we yet. are still we're, looking. We're looking for one. So we are appealing to our brothers and sisters who are viewing this tonight. It, um, Whatever means they can help us to come out to yeah, just us whatever us it takes. So that Moses can, need justice. So that Moses can obtain justice. Justice. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. <laughs> Justice for Moses Harris, the parents are crying. Louis and Emmanuel, they lost their son, police claim. He ran in the Congo River where he possibly drowned, but they have not been able to get the autopsy report to tell them the cause of death. Neither were they able to call them to identify the remains of their son. But Moses, and this happened, and according to the parents here, the body was found 77 days after he was reportedly drowned. We see there the uh, funeral taking place at uh, Christ Jubilee right there in Low Massachusetts. This is a very, very sad story, heartbreaking. Our condolences to the family. So 
since this happened, has you telling me that no lawyer has been involved at all? And, and why is that? Is it because of uh, money? Are you calling people and nobody's taking the case or you can't afford it? What's the issue? We, we're trying to get to lawyers, but uh, before then there was nobody. So lawyers were not interested in taking a case. There was nobody. There's no, there's no a document that someone can review. So people are kind of a little adamant. We contacted a couple of lawyers and um, no one is forthcoming to come to, to take it. So we're still looking out there. So if anybody know a lawyer that uh, can be of a help, we are here and we need help. And they said Moses' job, the claim he's a suicider and he's not. Because the first thing Moses never liked water. He's like me, never liked water. Okay? There's a pool right in my backyard. Moses never went in the water. He would just play with the water and say it's a blue water. Moses never went. But because the claim he's a suicider, that's the reason why I think some lawyers don't want it. But I want some lawyers to just look into the case. There's something you can look into and find something there to work with. I'm appealing to every lawyer that has work and has an experience. Please look into this case because there's so many things, so many things you can have to work with in this case. If he's a suicider, we need to find out. So please take this case and look into it. Wow. So, so they are claiming they are claiming that he committed suicide by going to the river. Yes. yes. And I know he snapped. He never yeah. did it. Here is a story on uh and the, the uh low mass. That's a story that uh from the WCVB is it reads here the family and friends of Massachusetts men are demanding answers in his missing person case two weeks after he was last seen getting into the Congo River as police were attempting to question him. Approximately 100 people held a vigil and protest in Low Saturday in honor of 25-year-old Moses Harris, who dis disappeared on December 19. Low police say Harris had an altercation with his girlfriend on the day he went missing. Surveillance video shows police officers approaching Harris that night as police planned to arrest him. According to police, Harris was wanted on domestic and vandalism charges at the time the video was taken. After attempting to get him back in his car or onto the ground, officers pull out a stun gun. That is when Harris is seen running towards the Congo River in the surveillance video, and it was the last time he was seen. That's the story yeah. in the newspaper. It, it, it doesn't add up to me, it's like uh, the, the video doesn't give much and people are using the video now to say, really, that's the story. Why is the police holding back or why is the authority in low Massachusetts not forthcoming with information? Because they did not do the due diligence to Moses. They know what it is. If, if the officers, if the police of law had done their due diligence, Moses would be here with us today. <laughs> So since then, you've been having, uh, you say you were having demonstration. There's a video here I want to play. Let me see what I can get. I can get this to play.
Tell me what's going on in this video. Okay, there's a protest, a peaceful protest going on. Some community members, I mean, community members are coming together to demand the footage, the entire footage of what happened on December 19th. And the police are now adamant. They build a barricade around the police uh, headquarters, the police station, and uh, the, the, the city hall for us to not be able to have access to go into the compound. So that's what is going on. People are coming, the community coming together, requesting the police to retire, to release the footage. That's what's going on in that video. And that's uh, the community. Who, who, who was at that protest? We have, uh, there's a group, there's a, uh, an association here called Cage Community for Cage is the one helping us. It's an okay. activist community. They are helping us to organize the protest. And then during the protest, we have uh, another group called Solidarity Law. They help to provide beverages for the protesters. And those are the people helping us in this uh, in this fight for justice for Moses. And from the footage I see there, it looks like it doesn't matter. You see black, white, Hispanic, everybody's there. Yeah. yeah everybody's there. Everybody come. Since Moses went missing on December 19th, since December 26th, every Saturday we have gone at the police station requesting. So since December 26th, every Saturday. Requesting the name the of the police, police officer, the, the full uh, police report, mm -hmm. and then the entire footage from the scene when this whole thing happened. Those are our three demands to the police station, but those are not things that were ever given. Is that protest still ongoing or because the police barricaded, that, has that stopped? Well, they stopped us from marching through the streets and which of course I, you know, I, I don't see why they should stop us. The claim is because COVID, COVID has subsided and then it's safety issue because there are many cars now running streets, many people. So it, there should, you know, if we go in the street, there will be accidents and stuff. So they are claiming it's safety, but I don't, I don't know why, what, what would stop the first amendment right that was given to anyone in the name of law police, you know, telling us that mm -hmm. it's because of so-called safety issues. And they will not give us, they will not give us uh, uh, official permit to protest. Yeah. Well, what has been the history of the low police when it comes to these kind of things? Uh, it's been very bad. It's been very, very bad. Low, when uh, the whole incident happened on December 27, 28, Moses' little brother wrote a petition and uh, put it on Instagram, and the 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 officer, the officer, the one of the officer, the assistant commissioner of police, daughter read it on Instagram and informed her father. The father called my wife and said he has. It has taken him 20 years to build his to character, build, to build his repetition, the character with the low police. So no one is going to tarnish his character. So low police are more concerned about their character than finding out what happened to Moses. Not just finding, but the care about their character than the life of my son. They value their character and do not value my son. And actually, I have heard from so many old ladies in this town that low police are accustomed to burying everything, sweeping everything under the rug. And this have proven everything they said to me because everything they're doing is to sweep under the rug. They do not care to call. I have to call before I talk to them. And since then, they never even called when the body was found. They never even, besides the day they came to tell us a body was found, nobody called yet to extend their condolences. 
when mm. we went to the funeral and they not see any police officer, nothing whatsoever. Yes. Yes. Nobody was there. No one from the city. Nobody from the city ever called us. They are so concerned about their name in low, about the name of low going than the life of black people. They don't care mm. anything. But I know if this was a white person, they would have done something different. Uh, have you tried to reach out to these uh, top black lawyers like uh, Ben Crum or R. Shapton or any of those people who normally I'm trying don't to get them. Like I'm trying. We, we're trying. We're trying. We in. We send communication out. We got a write out. We send out, and uh, we're trying everything we can. So if anybody listening, anybody viewing, who knows a uh, an avenue we can use, a channel we can use to get to any of these people. Please, please help us. Please help us so that we can get to them, so that we can have justice for Moses. It's since December, the family have not been able to, to come to reckon with this thing. No. It's taking a serious toll on the family. And there are a lot of things that we should have been doing as a family. Everything is on hold. Yes. Because Many night, my wife and I want to go to bed. I have to talk about the bed. Some night, if she goes to bed early, it's two o'clock. Hmm. Yeah, if she goes to bed early, that's two. So Sometimes, like last night, I literally talked her to go to bed by four this morning, just to have a rest. Every time she thinks about it, and it yeah. just breaks her down. And so, anybody, we we're, we're here tonight asking the Liberian community, the entire world, anybody who can be of a help to come and give us a hand so that we can have justice, justice. For, most, for most, so that we, we have answers to those questions to know what happened on the night of December 19. So at least somebody can come out to say something to us. This is life of a, a, a human being. Yes. 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 All right. Let me play the video again and we're going to, after that, we're going to read some comments. This is the Conquer River where the police claimed that Moses jumped on the morning of December 19 at about 2.30 a.m. when he had a brief encounter with an unknown police officer that led to his disappearance and death. So we are here seeking justice for Moses Harris. It took 77 days for Moses' body to be recovered. We are preparing with we cry and cry and the medical examiner and everyone refused for us to go and identify with somebody until the body was turned over to us on March 19. And uh, we want you to join us in this course so that the death of another black man will not go unaccounted for. Welcome back. This is Focus on Liberia. My guest, Mr. Emmanuel Wapo and Mrs. Louise Harris Wapo. They lost their son in Lowell, Massachusetts, and they are right here with me asking for justice. Let me, uh, we have uh, people viewing us. Let me uh, play, show some of the comments from our viewers. Comedian D. Carter say, have my deepest sympathy. Bishop Lawrence Jackson, I'm watching from Lowell, Massachusetts. My condolences, family. Uh, he went missing or he jumped in the river. Uh, that's what they are saying. Uh, Marie Potter is asking which state that is in Massachusetts. Eugenio Ja, this is a sad and heartbreaking story. My condolences to the family again. Every parent was nightmare. Prince said this was a creek. Comedian. D. Curtis, were there any gunshot wounds on his body? Wow. They... And, and the second question there is, how far is the river from the apartment? Those are the two questions. Okay. We... It's closer. It's very the, close. The, the apartment is close by... It's a luxurious apartment close by the river. But where the thing happened to... In the video to the distance, the path that Moses took is over 
300 meters. And in the 10 second clip, in the 10 second clip that they show from where Moses' car was parked to the river, it's over 300 meters. When we went there physically to, to see where Moses' car was parked to the river, it's over 300 meters. So in 10 seconds, he's not, he's not uh, using both. So there's no way he would have made the 300 meter in 10 in seconds. seconds. In no 10 way. seconds. Something else wow. must have happened. And then you answer this question before, did the family get a lawyer? We're looking for one. We're searching for one. Have you guys contacted Benjamin Lloyd Crum? And uh, is it Benjamin Lloyd Crum? Uh, is an American attorney, so that's uh, information of Benjamin Lloyd Crum that... Uh, Thank you. Prince Thank you is so much. Very there. Yeah. Jackie Sai say, who is the representative or senator of the district or state? Why is the NAACP quiet? I'm telling you. And we have reached out to almost everybody. Even um, the governor, I called crying for almost 10 minutes on his voicemail. And, uh, Everyone in this state, Anthony General, the governor office, the two senator, senators, the DA, assisting DA, the, the um, Congress people, everybody know about this, the entire state. And everybody quiet. Prince said, do you have a YouTube video on air or, or the, on the life of your son? Something like We. We do not have a YouTube video on his life. We have a YouTube video on, we have clips on the on the protest. We have clips on the protest. We have clip on the visual, and you know, just to get the story out there. So if you go on YouTube and you tap Moses Harris, you will see clips on uh, YouTube about Moses Harris. And uh, even Instagram. on Inst Instagram, there are people who carry some of the protesters put the story on their Instagram page yeah. just to make sure that the, the message get out there. Get across. So anybody yeah. watching can get these messages and just spread it on your Instagram page, share it uh, on your Twitter feed so that we can continue sharing. The right person will hear it and Moses will, will receive justice. justice. Because right now, everyone Cross their legs and just it's like nothing happening in nothing Lowe. like nothing happened and since since moses went missing three other people have gone missing and there have been a count for them when moses went missing in law is bigger than is larger than drake and law have more police than drake another man went missing Another man ran from the police and went, according to the police, and went into a pond, and that man was rescued. Alive. Alive. He had, according to the police, he had an altercation with his girlfriend. His girlfriend ran into the, the river. That man was rescued alive. Alive. So you can you can be the judge here. You you can fairly guess his what color he was. Yeah. Hmm. He was rescued. What, mm -hmm. what has been the, what has been the level of the year old man? He was rescued alive. Oh, Another wow. lady, according to the low police, they put that night they deployed the helicopter, but no one in the apartment complex heard the helicopter. No, no one heard the fire service. The fire service because it's it's it is a very luxurious apartment. When anything of such going on, they sent a light to the inhabitants of the apartment building to tell them that because of ABC reason. And in law, when something happened, the law police sent ammo a light to all the all our phones. They gave it to the to the the carrier in the area, and the carrier sent it to all of the phone. But for Moses mm -hmm. Harris, there was nothing of such. Moses went missing. They informed us 12 uh, hours 12 after. hours later. And then 16 hours later, when mom called the police station and said, my son went missing. You said my son went missing. 
and there's no ammo allowed. And we on, I'm on your website right now on a low police website. No information. There's no information about my son. He said he went missing 2 a.m., 2.30 a.m. In now, a frozen cold water, no. you claim. You claim in a frozen cold water, and now it is 6 p.m. in the evening, and there's no information about him. The officer mm -hmm. said, we're going to have a press conference right now, and after the press conference, there will be uh, a release, a, uh, a release, uh, stating but his name will not be there. No. So at seven that evening on December 19, it was when the police came up with a one page, one page, two paragraphs. But somebody like about stating that a low man ran from the police and went into the water. At seven, it was after mom has called them and terrorized them before they could mm -hmm. release that information. Yeah. So what is it? So from, just from the onset. Now, mom been in this city for 15 years. 15 years. She been using the same number. Same number. And then how could you not get to her when her son went into the water? Now, so I, after I, I 12 actually asked hours. Them. So what is it that you're trying to clean up? What is it that you're trying to hide before coming to inform the family? Yeah. So all of these are questions that we need answers for. Yes. Now, yeah. with all the help of the public out there, we will not be able to get answers. No way. Okay. So we need your help, people. What has been the level of support you're getting from your community, your your local church, your community, the, the uh, African community, the immigrant community, Cambodian community, in law? What is that support that you're getting? Uh, to be honest with you, no. we're getting support from the opposite community from we, the white community we're getting more support more solidarity from the white community and white community from boston from lane from Marlboro. those are all people that come from other cities from conquer they come from out to come to low to protest and everybody in law will be sitting at their houses i send out memo all the time i send up information stating we need help with protests we need help and if people come out and let these police people know what they have done to us they will say something but people have to come from out so maybe low police think we are joking because they're all white kids college kids that come out here to support us with the help of cage you know so cage and then the 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 the, 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 the college uh, 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 um, children that come out here to help us and there's nobody from low. Few people came out one or two Saturdays. I will be friend with you. Like I think four Saturdays, people from low show up. People from Christ Jubilee, the pastor came out like twice to you know came in solidarity. And then um, few other people here and there from other churches look up to the world. They came out to support us from our church, Hope Community Christian Union Church. But in the continuation of the protest. It was all the college um, children, university children coming out here in and and the help of Cage and low solidarity. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Mr. C S A, mommy take half. Justin will take eight calls. Friends also say, has there been a history of Moses wanting to take his own life? Has there been any of that history? No, no way. Never. No. So, so going forward, what I, you know, I know you are trying, is there anything you're going to do within the next few weeks, few months? Uh, what is it going to look like? What's the plan? And what do you want the public to do to help? We want the public to come in solidarity with us to share the story. Those that are online right now, share it on your whatever uh, social media platform you have, share the story. And then, um, you can uh, link us to whoever you know that can uh, come and advocate on behalf of Moses Harris yeah. and uh, stay in solidarity with us. Pray for us and pray for Moses so that Moses can obtain justice. And and when you say share the story, what, what, so, what, what, what are exactly are they going to share? Is it like hashtag something trending or what you want people to share? All right. Uh, hashtag justice for Moses Harris is on Instagram and uh, you can share it you 
this this uh broadcast right now you can share the link of this broadcast so people yeah. will understand they will know what is going on of course because if people do not hear the other side of the story mm -hmm. they won't know what is going on all the police is doing is try to pin moses and you know black as a suicide so Maybe he's not and he's not no mm -hmm. moses has never swam in his entire life no all the time he was on the face of this height, he did not swim. No. Like mom said, we have a we have a huge pool in the backyard. Moses, two little brothers and I, we plan a boys' day out. Moses, we agree, we agree to the schedule and everything. And Moses will shut his phone off on the day that we agree on. And then the next day he will call me and say, Oh dad, I know you kept calling me yesterday, but you know I, I ain't coming there, I ain't like water. And then two, three days after he will come and say, oh, dad, can okay, we get a pool ready? I said, okay, let's get a pool ready. So this is the kind of pressing. So he didn't like water. No. So he did not jump in that water. No. So sorry. Uh, oh, let's uh, conclude the broadcast. Is there anything else that you want to say? We're very, very sorry for the uh, loss of your son, mm -hmm. a young man, you know, who lost his life at a time that you know you needed him most yeah. we are very very sorry for your loss may uh, you be comforted and uh, we hope that people watching this video will support the family share the show do your best to uh, give them the help they need and uh, if you have your number now you can share or uh, how people can reach out to you to be able to give you the, the support that you need uh, Nine seven eight nine seven eight three nine eight eight four three nine yeah oh, that's the number nine seven eight three nine eight eight four three nine they can reach out to you to be able to assist in whatever way possible so, yeah and so I have yeah, go ahead, mom. Start starting with mom. Let's uh, get your closing statement. Yeah, in in this slide, I just want to take this time to just say thanks to everyone for contributing um towards the funeral for Moses. The go for me was absolutely awesome. We were able to raise every penny we had to bury Moses. The funeral service and probably autopsy was done even though the state did theirs but i just wanted to say the family did that too we did ours so thanks to everyone who contributed for i mean for that water cost thanks so much and i just say god bless you and god bless your family standing your hands extending your hands over to our family manuel your yeah, last comment yeah. Thank you to the entire community. We want to say thanks to all those who helped. We want to say thank you to Brother Jack. We want to say thank you to all the staff uh, in studio, uh, Voice of Lavin, Voice of Liberia, and all of the Liberians who are listening. We want to say thank you. Even those who are not listening right now, we just want to take this time to say thank you because when you receive it, you should be able to share it. And uh, we are grateful yeah. for all of those who are coming around for your prayer, for your thoughts, for the messages, mm -hmm. and uh, the financial support. Yes. It's not easy, even just the phone call. Yeah. Some of you just call, some and people. some mm -hmm. people will just call to check, or some people will text to check up on, on I mean, check up on us. Those calls and texts goes a long way, yeah. because sometimes they come just in time when the family is totally down. Yeah. So we want to tell you, thank you for lifting up our spirit and lifting up our soul. Yeah. And thank to all those who are listening and watching right now. And some people cook as well, sending to the family. So we just want to say thanks so much. Thank you. This is the Kompa River, where the police claimed that Moses jumped on the morning of December 19 at about 2.30 a.m. when he had a brief encounter with my unknown police officer that led to his disappearing and death so we are here seeking justice for Moses Harris it took 77 days for Moses' body to be recovered we as a parent we, we cry and cry and the medical examiner and everyone refused for us to go and identify somebody until the body was turned over to us on March 19 
and uh, we want you to join us in this course so that the death of another black man will not go unaccounted for. Thank you so much, Lois and Emmanuel. And once again, on behalf of Focus on Liberia, we say we are deeply sorry for your loss. May our God bless you and uh, may the good Lord comfort you. And we encourage all our viewers to uh, do your best to uh, link the family with any help that they need, being your lawyer, uh, and also call and identify with them and uh, give them your support. On behalf of all of us here at Focus,